Hello, my name is Jamie Liggins, and I am so excited to welcome you to the 2020 National Notary Association Virtual Conference. Welcome. I am one of the presenters, and again, I am a founder and owner of Notary Access and Business Services. Originally from California to now Shreveport, Louisiana. This presentation is not only being presented by myself, there's two other lovely ladies. Brenda Charles Edwards, founder and owner of Black Orchid Notary out of Seattle, Washington. Thank you, Jamie. I've been a notary public since 1992. And Crystal Whiteside Lemon out of Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, everyone. I'm Crystal Whiteside Lemon of CNL Mobile Notary Service, LLC. Combining all three ladies, you have over 68 years of experience. Each presenter will tell you their distinctive area of business. We're going to tell you what led us in that direction, the skill set that's, that's required, who you need to target, market or focus your marketing attention on. We're going to tell you more about the diversification of this particular area of business, how it leads to business in your notary world. And then finally, we're going to discuss long range goals, how having them can help you create a strong business presence. So let's begin. I first want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am, of course, a notary, certified notary signing agent, notary law instructor, NNA ambassador, but I also had the privilege of being nominated the 2004 National Notary of the Year and being the 2018 keynote speaker at the conference. I am the author of a book entitled What's in Your Notary Toolbox that I co-authored with the lovely Judith Lawrence and my personal book baby entitled 10 Ways to Say Notarize This When Life Happens. I want to tell you, starting off, my distinct area of business is community outreach, volunteer networking, and those two things lead to collaboration. You want to do these things and end up with a wonderful collaboration with another company or even person. In order to do this, we need to define what community outreach is. Community outreach for a notary, you as a notary, you want to make sure that the volunteer work that you're involved in correlates to your notary profession or with the clientele that you're wanting to secure. You definitely want to do that. And in order to ascertain if you're doing this is to ask these questions to yourself. Is the community outreach or volunteer work, is it business related? Can it advance my career? Will I be exposed to people of common interests? And finally, will I come in contact with people who need the services that I offer? You want to do something worthwhile. You want to be involved in a program that will give you all the tools and training that you need, but you need to also be able to establish a strong business presence. So this is where AARP comes in. AARP, let me tell you, has been in business since 1958. They've been around for a while, and they've been the leader in consumer protection and fraud prevention for the elderly. And I'm going to be, I'm not embarrassed to tell you that when I was younger, I used to think, oh, I can't wait till I get an AARP card or a membership because I thought of the benefits that you get. Let me tell you about this program that I would like for you to be involved in. It's a volunteer program and it's entitled Fraud Watch Network. Being involved in this program, you will be called the Fraud Watch Trainer. The AARP has several programs, but this particular program correlates to your role as a notary public. How is that? Let me tell you. We as notaries, we're on the frontline defense of fighting against fraud. We are there to protect people from being victims of fraud by verifying identity, making sure that they are not only willing to sign the document, but are aware of it, to say the least. We get involved with protecting people from fraud. And especially so, this particular program is targeted for the elderly. So it is a worthwhile program to get involved with. That is to start off 
one of the benefits of being involved in this program. Not only are you presenting fraud and scam presentations to various groups, clubs, people in your community, even libraries, but you're also able to promote your business. That's important that you would be involved in a program and at the same time cleverly promoting your business. It's also beneficial because you can become known as an expert in fraud. You don't have to do much work. AARP trains you. They give you everything you need to know. I received a thumb drive when I had my training. It was full of wonderful PowerPoint presentations. And they range on the topics of identity theft, medical identity fraud, cyber safety, investment fraud, retirement planning, and other presentations, just to name a few. As, as well as they showed me how to use the portal so that anywhere I traveled, I could be reimbursed for my travel costs. So AARP is there to help you. Each state has their local program offerings. They have local chapters that you can get involved with, and you have a local state associate director that you can contact and ask any of the questions you may have so that you can get started in this program. So since I said that, started in the program, I'm sure you want to know how do you get started. You need to contact your local AARP office and ask for a volunteer application. You can do that by going to the website, you can call, or you can do it, start the process online. When you start the process, you are definitely going to explain that you're interested in the Fraud Watch Network Facilitator Training Program. Since they have several programs, you need to be specific. Three, the local associate state director of advocacy and outreach will contact you. So you'll wait for that. And once they contact you, they're going to tell you what steps you need to follow next. It definitely won't hurt you to tell them that you learned about this program at the 2020 NNA Notary Conference. You can even be specific and let them know that Jamie Liggins refers you to this program. I have no problems with you using my name as a referral. Please do so. Now, you know what the program is. You know how to get involved. But I want to tell you what led me in this direction. I attended an NNA conference about two years ago and listened to a fraud protection to protect the elderly put on by Brenda Charles Edwards. I thought it was an awesome presentation. I even as, as she was giving the presentation, I was sitting there thinking, wow, I would like to do this. I would like to give the presentations in my own community. And how could I get involved? So, of course, I talked to her. She coaxed me and told me what to do. I got started. But then I took it a step further. In my mind, I said, wow, I would love to do these presentations, not only one time, two times, but I want to be consistent at giving these presentations because I need to establish a business presence. I have moved to a new state. I left California, moved to Louisiana in a new area, new culture, a lot of notaries in my area. I had some competition here, but I need to make my business visible to the community that I served, build relationships with local residents, city leaders, businesses, communities, what have you. I had to do it. I had to establish a business presence. That's what I needed. That's what led me in this direction. I saw that this was a good, productive way of doing that. In harmony with that, I discuss more about establishing a business presence in my book, as I stated to you earlier, 10 Ways to Say, Notarize This When Life Happens. I discuss how to start, reestablish, or reinvent your business no matter where you are. In, in most cases, people move and that makes it difficult. So I expound on that in, in the book. So without dwelling on that too much, you know the goal is to establish a business presence. We need to know the skill set that is needed. These are things that you have already developed as a notary or notary signing agent. You have learned how to become a team player. 
You're versatile because you meet with all types of people in various areas. You deal with title companies, you deal with signing agencies, you do you are versatile. You have an industry related skill and you have honed in on it as a notary and signing agent and being at this conference shows that that's what you are doing. You are resourceful because you are here as a member. You get information from the NNA on critiquing your skill as a notary and signing agent. And now you are moving into another area of being a fraud facilitator trainer and you are going to get all of these things directly from AARP. You're going to build on what you have already started and that helps you to create your brand even more so. I also will say positivity and passion, they are the core requirements for anything you do because that along with having an open mind, willingness to learn and building on your existing skills sets you up to be successful in volunteering as a fraud trainer. So the question is, who would you market to? I say everyone. The reason why I say everyone is because either you know a senior, you are a senior, you're taking care of a senior, are in business for seniors, or you will be a senior at some point in time. And in your target market, there's two categories that I say you want to focus on. Specific customers, potential customers. Specific customers can be people that you want to directly get notary business from. Say you market yourself to a title company. You offer to do presentation for a title company. They're going to know you are a notary because you're going to let them know as well. Then you say potential customers, people that I would like to do business with, offer my services to. How does that translate to your notary community? Because as a notary and as an AARP fraud trainer, you want to make a business presence. You want to network. You want to create collaborations. You want to form working partnerships. You can do that working for free as an AARP fraud trainer. Really? Yes. Really, you can do this. It helps to take your business to the very next level. You want to do that. Word of mouth, in this case, is your calling card. And not only that, when you do this, you're giving way to diversification. When you diversify your business and adding something else to it, that leads to being more knowledgeable. It leads to being an expert in a particular area and other job opportunities. As I stated earlier, ARP gives you a list of presentations that you can do. So you get to develop a speaker's bureau, you get to build skills and gain experience in a new field and be an invited guest speaker to events. Woohoo! Isn't that awesome? And you're doing this all free. I tell you more about this in the book. You have to read the book more information but this is enough to get started this will help you build your business and as you're doing these presentations i want to tell you of a clever way of marketing by way of an experience i entered the library i offered my speakers book to the librarian and she looked at my list and she saw all of these presentations that i do one caught her attention. She said, can you give this presentation about cyber safety this month? This is cyber safety month. I said, I didn't know it was cyber safety month. But I said, okay, great, I'll do it. I was prepared, we set up a date. I did the presentation. I had a great time. I met other ladies and people that I could connect and network with and let them know that I'm a notary public. After that, I was referred by her to another library who saw my list and asked, can you do a, a presentation for us? Great, no problem. Another library, can you do a presentation for us? Great, no problem. All of these people are people in my community. They all know I am a notary. And now I am becoming an invited guest speaker to various events, whether it be at job fairs, at real estate, housewarmings, all types of events I have been invited to and that is allowing me to create partnerships 
form a network and have a strong business presence. It truly helps. Now, here's my tip for clever marketing. When you are doing these events, make sure you have a notary public pin on. Make sure you have, if you have a logo, if you don't have one, get one. But have your logo or the words notary public somewhere on a coffee mug or on a water bottle. Have a shirt. Have your business cards. Have everything related to being a notary public or a notary signing agent there. No one can say that that's a conflict of interest by having yourself marked and advertised. You are pushing your brand without saying it verbally. You don't want to do a presentation on for AARP and then slyly start talking about notary public, a whole set, a whole different presentation. You don't want to do that. But there's nothing wrong with having a speaker's bureau with all of your presentations, those specifically marked for AARP. And if you have any other presentations that you give, why not list them? Set yourself up. Let other people know who you are. Create opportunities for yourself. And finally, the long range goals. Let's fill in these blanks, okay? You wanna maintain a strong business presence. Increase your support network. Donate your time to a worthwhile cause. And finally, find a cost-effective way to broaden your business while bringing fun and fulfillment in your life. What better way to do this than being an AARP fraud trainer? I want to thank you for giving me your time and attention in this presentation. Know that the next two ladies will discuss their distinct areas of business. Thank you, Jamie. My career has taken many ups and downs and detours, but I have never lost sight of the importance of the role as a notary public. Because of the pandemic, I have been given the opportunity to expand my notary role and become a remote online notary. This is a great platform to protect your clients and your family. There are many platforms of social media to choose from. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, websites, just to name a few. Currently, I use a podcast on Facebook and a website. Six things to remember before starting a podcast. Choose your format. Do you want a late night talk show? Do you want a tutorial or lecture? I chose the talk show format. Record your podcast at least once a week. It's important for listeners to know when to expect new content. My show is live and it airs every Friday at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the web and on Facebook. Also, you need to find guests with energy and who know how to tell their story. My guests talk about issues that affect older adults and their families. I've received calls for notary work because I promote my notary business. Also, just recently, a doctor who was my guest heard me talk about my notary business on the show, and she said, I could use your services. And I said, why do you say that? He says, because I usually go to FedEx to get things notarized. Would you come to me? And I said, yes, I am a mobile notary. My tagline is, tell me where, I'll meet you there. That is great networking. Number four, practice. Post two or three practice podcasts to your website. Promote your podcasts consistently. You can use other social media platforms to promote your podcast. And lastly, get ideas from the competition. Visit podcast.com or tune in. It's okay. Now let's talk about podcast advertising. Podcast advertising allows for a real creative approach. Host read which means the host will read the ad during their podcast. Pre-roll or intro, the ad is placed before the start of the podcast, usually about 15 seconds. Mid-roll, the ad is placed in the middle of the podcast, usually about 60 seconds. Post-roll or outro, the last few words before the end of the podcast, a last call to action. So my theme song is played at my intro. I use the station ID checks talking about my guests and special things that are coming up after the intro, during the mid, and at the end. My outro is a continuation of my theme song. Also with podcast advertising, there's sponsored or custom dedicated. Sponsored means that the host will talk about a personal experience with the product 
and the audience is encouraged to buy. Custom, dedicated, the advertiser and the producer host create content that revolves around themes that are usual to the show or that will fit in any episode. These pieces will mostly be longer than the usual mid, pre, post roles. Native branded, which is full length episodes created by the show on behalf of a brand like Nike. 74% of podcast users listen to learn something new. 51% of US podcast listeners pay attention to the ads. Do you? 54% of podcast listeners say they think about buying an advertised product. Now, sponsorship. The sponsorship must be a win, win, win for your audience, for the sponsor, and for you. Otherwise, it won't work. Sponsorships must first make sense for you and your business based on your goals. Create your wish list of sponsors, at least 15 to 20 companies or products and services that you know would be a great fit for your audience. Your podcast is your show, and therefore it's your decision how many sponsors you bring on or feature in a single episode. I'll give you an example. I had a guest that was a builder who remodeled homes for older adults. He became a sponsor for my show, he received calls for his service, and I received referrals from him for my notary work because he knew that I was a loan signing agent. A win, win, win. Diversification leads to business. The world is your oyster. Submit your podcast to iTunes, Google Profile, Pinterest, Celebrity, YouTube video, and more. And finally, long range goals help create a strong business. Share your knowledge as a thought leader. Look at the future and set a course that others will follow. Build credibility. You be the expert. Create partnerships. Start a meetup group. I just did that. Be a mentor. I mentor new notaries and teach notary essential classes at a local community college. Now I'd like to thank you for your time and I hope I've piqued your interest in becoming a notary public. And now, here's Crystal Whiteside Lemon. Thank you, Brenda. I've been a commissioned notary public and certified notary signing agent since 2008. My tagline, your pickup and go, Notary Pro. I'm a licensed and ordained minister since 2016, and I service South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. My tagline, say I do with Minister Crystal. I am honored to be an NNA ambassador. I take that platform to all heights in education and mentoring notaries. And in 2018, I was honored as a Notary of the Year Special Honoree representing Florida. And in 2019, I became a distinguished speaker. And lastly, I am a host of a weekly talk show called The Notary Corner. It airs every Wednesday from 2 to 2.30. You can hear me at www.kingdompromotionsradio.com. This is an international internet Christian radio station where I'm also a host. So enough about me, let's get started. Underutilized areas of notarization. This is how I built my business when things got slow. Just as simple as that. Thinking outside the box. Our objectives, overview of distinctive areas of business, connection with the notary profession, target market, diversification leads to business. Overview of distinctive areas of business. Keep your eye open and ready for new opportunities or at least considered uncharted areas of business. Connection in the notary profession. Commission notary public, certified notary agents, Demonstrate a working knowledge, professionalism, and customer skills in our toolbox. What's in your toolbox? These are a few things that I have. Blue, black pens, my embosser, a stapler, a ruler, rubber bands, paper clips, large and small, bull clips, large, small, and medium, hand sanitizer, hand wipes, and my ink pad for the thumbprint and the alcohol swabs, just to name a few. All right, so let's get started. What is your target market? Tattoo shops, law firms, commercial and residential title companies. The market here 
with tattoo shops are the parents and the guardians. And in some cases, it's the student as well because they may see your card somewhere or see, as I have, a magnet on my car and say, Mom, we can get her to help us. Okay, so all of that's going to tie in in just a moment. And with law firms, what we're looking at with law firms is the fact that they're not going to send out their most trusted employee to hold notarizations with their clients. So go in and ask, may I be your notary, your mobile notary for your clients? That might seem kind of forward, but you can work it out. I, I've been that forward, but it wasn't, um, wasn't a bad thing, and I did get the job. So we'll discuss that in a little bit. So now let's discuss the consent forms. How are we going to get this consent form? When you go into the tattoo shops, there is a reception area. You're going to ask for the owner, the manager, and it may just even be a tattoo artist that's there that says, I can help you just as well as the owner, or I am the one that's managing the shop today. So when you speak to that owner or the representative, ask them, do you service minors? And when they ask that question, they look, may look at you a little funny and they may just say, no, then it's not a problem. The next question, do you tattoo pregnant women? And they said, of course not. Okay, that's no problem. So now you know your services can't be used there, but you will get one that says they do. The women that are pregnant, they may have a certain standard only in their first trimester. That consent form is called a hold harmless, and it's pretty much similar to what you see right here. So don't be surprised. And they do have tattoo artists that will tattoo them or pierce for them, but they have to have that form so they have no liability. And for the consent form for minors, in the state of Florida, minors cannot be tattooed under the age of 16 without the consent of their parents or their guardian. So this form is very important to get used to and to ask for. Take your highlighter, as for that copy, highlight all the important parts. He may tell you or she may tell you of areas where the notary missed areas. So see, now you're going to be a perfectionist at this form. So consent forms may vary, but they are simple and detailed. Instruct the parent or guardian to complete the form prior without signing or dating it. Ensure the parent has a proper ID and it's not a sister or brother working the system. The last tip, offer a service fee, okay? So your service fee, ask, offer a discount. So tell your representative that you'll offer a certain fee, like $10 off if they send clients your way. That might be $10 off your travel, but whatever it is, it's a bundle. So you figure out what you wanna do. It don't have to be $10, it's only an example. Depending on the, how far you're traveling, how many forms you're doing, you set it up, but make it attractive so they will hire you. Notarizations and tattoo shops that pierce minors. Again, this is a statute that illustrates that minors under the age of 16 cannot be tattooed or pierced without a parent, okay? Section 381, TAC 0075, the Florida statute. Body tattoos for minors is the same way. They're going more explicit here to perform the form of body art is an act of penetrating the skin to make generally a permanent in nature whole mark or scar. Parental and legal guardian guidelines. These are the areas and states that have consent by legal guardians. Uh-oh, the one in red says Wyoming. They are verbal consent. That's the only one that's a verbal consent. In the state of Florida, we have to have documentation. Parental legal guidelines continue. These are the states that prohibit by law. In California, you cannot do it. And no current age limit. Iowa, Hawaii, Wisconsin. Know your laws, know your statutes. And diversification leads to business. Real estate sales, purchases, and refinances. Structured annuity, settlements, tax debt, foreclosures, wills, trusts, healthcare surrogates, Oh, oh, the consent form again. There's various types of consent. Have you completed a consent for a passport where the minor is going out of the country with their grandparents or a first cousin? Get familiar. These are uncharted waters. 
And this one threw me by storm with the crematory. This item is very small in nature. It's smaller than, a little bit bigger than a credit card and you're supposed to notarize it. So some crematories will tell you how to fill it out or they provide instructions. And also I'm in the business of adoptions. So adoptions can be a very lucrative business. Get with someone like a, a law attorney, I mean adoption agency, and they may provide the boilerplate documents and sit you down and demonstrate what needs to be done. Now you're walking into good business. So take all the skills we mentioned before and now master them. And that leads us to our next slide. Long range goals help create a strong business presence. Master new areas of opportunity that are aligned with your strengths, benefits for community gold, network with other notaries, and build a strong community presence of honesty and professionalism and reliability. Networking brings on resources. Resources or professionalism, professional notaries. Network with other notaries and build a strong community presence. Be honest and professional and be reliable. Long range goals help create a strong business presence. Research the needs of local businesses and demonstrate your knowledge and flexibility and enhance their business presence. As entrepreneurs, the opportunities are endless. Without being a long wolf, share your knowledge and teach others. This will sustain a stronger business brand presence. So that concludes our information today on underutilized areas of notary business and post your questions or comments below. Thank you for listening.